Listening test instructions. The listening test is about 50 minutes. There are six parts in listening test. You will have about six minutes to listen to each passage and answer the questions. The passage will be played once. Hey, you look concerned. What's on your mind? The final exam. I'm not fully prepared yet. Well, don't worry too much. You still have three days. Yeah, but three days will fly past in a wink. Well, you still have time to cram things in your brain anyway. Question 1. Why is the man looked worried? You will hear a conversation in three sections. You will hear each section only once. After each section, you will hear two or three questions. You will hear the questions only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hey there, I'm here for my appointment with Sarah. Hi, welcome. Yes, you must be Ms. Rachel. I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Sarah. I'm really excited to get my hair done today. I've been looking forward to this for weeks. That's great to hear. So, what were you thinking of doing with your hair today? Well, I've been thinking about getting some highlights. Nothing too drastic, just something to add a bit of dimension and brightness to my hair. Sounds like a lovely idea. Have you had highlights before? Yeah, I've had them a few times in the past, but it's been a while. I'm ready for a change. Perfect. We can definitely do that for you. For you. Do you have any specific ideas in mind for the color? I was thinking of going for a caramel or honey blonde color. Something natural looking but still noticeable. Those shades would complement your skin tone really well. We can customize the blend to make it just right for you. And how about the cut? Are you looking for anything in particular? Not really. Just a trim to get rid of the split ends and maybe some layers to add movement. Got it. We'll freshen up the ends and add some layers to give your hair some bounce. Anything else you'd like to add or change? No, I think that's it. I trust your expertise, Sarah. Great, let's get started then. I'll take you over to the shampoo station first. What is the customer's response when asked if she has any specific ideas for the color? What color does the customer want to go for? What does the hairstylist suggest to add movement to the customer's hair? You will hear the second section of the conversation shortly. Ah, that feels so relaxing. I love getting my hair washed. It's definitely one of the best parts of the salon experience. Now I'll mix up the color for your highlights. 
While it's processing, would you like a magazine or anything to read? Actually, could we chat instead? I'm curious, how did you get into hairstyling? Sure. Well, I've always been interested in art and beauty. I used to experiment with my own hair and my friend's hair when I was younger. After high school, I decided to pursue it professionally and went to cosmetology school. That's really cool. It sounds like you found your passion early on. Yeah, I'm really grateful that I did. I love being able to help people feel confident and beautiful through their hair. I can tell you're passionate about what you do. It makes the whole experience even better. Thank you. I appreciate that. And what about you? What do you do when you're not at the salon? I work in marketing for a tech company. It's a pretty fast-paced environment, so coming to the salon is my way of unwinding and pampering myself. That sounds hectic but exciting. It's important to have those moments of self-care. Definitely. And getting my hair done always gives me a confidence boost, especially when it turns out just how I envisioned it. I'm glad to hear that. Speaking of which, I think your, your highlights are ready to be rinsed. Let's head back to the chair. How did the hairstylist get into hairstyling? Why does the customer come to the salon? What does the hairstylist appreciate about her job? You will hear the third section of the conversation shortly. All right, we're all set with the color. Now, I'll trim your hair and add those layers we talked about. Sounds good. I can't wait to see the final result. Me too. So, do you have any plans for the rest of the day? Not really, just going to enjoy the nice weather and maybe meet up with some friends later. Oh wow, I love it. The color is exactly what I wanted and the cut is perfect. I'm so glad you're happy with it. If you ever need anything else or want to try something new, just let me know. Will do, Sarah. Thanks again for such a wonderful experience. You're welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you next time. What does the customer plan to do after leaving the salon? What does the customer think of the final result? You will hear a conversation followed by five questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. So how did the interview with the mayor go? 
It was quite an eventful session. You wouldn't believe what happened. Right in the middle of the interview, a protester burst into the room. A protester? During a formal interview? That's outrageous. What did the protester want? Apparently, they were upset about the new development plans in the downtown area. They claimed the mayor was neglecting the community's needs and prioritizing corporate interests. That sounds intense. How did the mayor react? To be honest, the mayor handled it pretty well. He stayed calm and tried to address the protesters' concerns, even though it was clear the protester was very agitated. Did you manage to capture any of this on camera? Huh? Yes, we did. Our cameraman kept rolling throughout the whole incident. It's going to make for some compelling footage. Wow, that's definitely going to get a lot of attention. How did the rest of the interview go after that? After the protester was escorted out, the mayor took a moment to compose himself and then continued the interview. He even made a point to discuss the tester raised, which was quite commendable. That's impressive. It's always tough to stay composed under such circumstances. Did the mayor's responses seem genuine? Yes, he seemed genuinely concerned and willing to engage with the community's worries. He promised to hold a public forum to address these development issues more openly. That's a smart move. Public forums can really help in these situations. Do you think the protesters' interruption will affect public opinion? It might. It certainly highlights the controversy surrounding the development plans. People might appreciate the mayor's willingness to discuss it openly, but it also shows there's significant unrest that needs to be addressed. Definitely. This story is going to be a big deal. We should make sure to cover the public forum when it happens. Agreed. It will be interesting to see how the mayor handles it and whether he follows through on his promises. Absolutely. Great work today. This kind of story really shows the importance of journalism in bringing these issues to light. Thanks. It was definitely an unforgettable interview. Let's hope it leads to some positive changes in the community. How did the mayor handle the protesters' interruption? What did the cameraman do during the incident? What did the mayor promise to do in response to the protesters' concerns? What did the woman emphasize about journalism in this scenario? How did the man describe the interview? You will hear a conversation followed by six questions. Listen to each question. You will hear the question only once. Choose the best answer to each question. Hi there, good morning. Good morning, how can I help you today? 
I'm having a bit of trouble with pests in my garden. I was hoping you could help me figure out what they are and how to get rid of them. Of course, I'd be happy to help. What kind of pests are you dealing with? Well, I've noticed a few different issues. For one, there are these tiny green bugs on my roses. They seem to be sucking the sap out of the leaves. Those sound like aphids. They're quite common and can cause a lot of damage if not dealt with. Have you tried anything to get rid of them yet? I sprayed them with some soapy water, but it didn't seem to do much. Is there something more effective I can use? Soapy water is a good start, but if that's not working, you might want to try an insecticidal soap. It's more potent and specifically designed for garden pests like aphids. That sounds good. I'll give that a try. There's another problem, though. Something is eating the leaves of my vegetable plants. The leaves are full of holes. Hmm, that sounds like it could be caterpillars or slugs. Have you seen any small green caterpillars or slimy trails? I haven't noticed any caterpillars, but I have seen some silvery trails on the leaves and around the plants. Those trails are a sign of slugs. For slugs, you could use slug pellets or set up beer traps. Slugs are attracted to the yeast in beer, and they'll crawl in and drown. Beer traps? That's interesting. How do I set those up? It's, it's pretty simple. Just fill a shallow container with beer and bury it in the soil so the rim is at ground level. The slugs will be drawn to it and fall in. I'll definitely try that. Thank you so much for your help. I feel a lot more confident about tackling these pests now. You're welcome. Good luck with your garden and feel free to come back if you have any more questions. Thanks again. Have a great day. What type of pests are attacking the woman's roses? What alternative solution does the store clerk suggest for dealing with the bugs on the roses? What did the woman see on the leaves of her vegetable plants? What is suggested to be the cause of the silvery trails on the leaves and around the plants? What method does the store clerk suggest for controlling the slug infestation? How should the beer traps be set up? You will hear a news item once. It is about 1.5 minutes long. Then five questions will appear. Choose the best way to complete each statement from the drop-down menu.
In a surprising turn of events, an extraordinary bird named Einstein has been captivating audiences and scientists alike with its remarkable talents. Einstein, an African grey parrot residing at the Knoxville Zoo in Tennessee, has demonstrated an impressive range of abilities, solidifying its reputation as one of the most intelligent birds in the world. Einstein's talents go far beyond typical avian mimicry. This parrot not only mimics human speech with astonishing accuracy, but also performs a, ver a variety of sound effects, including animal noises, mechanical sounds, and even imitations of other birds. Einstein's extensive vocabulary and sound repertoire have made it a star attraction at the zoo drawing visitors from across the country. What sets Einstein apart is the apparent understanding and context with which it uses its vocalizations. Zoo trainers report that Einstein can identify and name objects, respond to questions, and even engage in simple conversations. This, le this level of cognitive ability is rare and has piqued the interest of scientists studying animal intelligence and communication. Einstein's training involves positive reinforcement techniques, where it is rewarded for correct responses and new vocalizations. The method not only enhances the bird's learning experience, but also strengthens the bond between Einstein and its trainers. The parrot's playful personality and willingness to interact make these training sessions both educational and entertaining. The implications of Einstein's abilities are significant for the scientific community. African grey parrots are already known for their high intelligence, but Einstein's skills suggest that these birds may possess cognitive abilities comparable to those of young children. Research on Einstein and other parrots like it could provide deeper insights into the nature of animal intelligence and the evolution of communication. Einstein's fame has grown beyond the zoo, with numerous appearances on television shows and viral videos on, on social media. This talented bird continues to amaze and inspire proving that intelligence and creativity are not exclusive to humans.
You will listen to a two minutes video, then eight questions appear. Choose the best way to answer each question. All right, folks, let's get this meeting started. We've got a lot to cover today. Absolutely. Thanks for taking the lead, Bill. So, first on the agenda is the upcoming school fundraiser. Any ideas on how we can make it more successful this year? I was thinking we could organize some fun activities for the kids, like a mini carnival with games and prizes. That usually draws in a lot of families. That's a great idea, Sarah. We could also reach out to local businesses for sponsorships or donations to help cover the costs and boost our fundraising efforts. Definitely. And maybe we could involve the parents more this time, like have them volunteer to run the different booths or food stalls. It could create a stronger sense of community involvement. I like that idea. It's important for parents to feel connected to the school and invested in its success. Agreed. Now, moving on to the next item, the school's facilities. We've been talking about renovating the playground for a while now. Do we have any updates on that front? I've been looking into it, and it seems like we could apply for grants to help fund the renovations. There are also some local contractors who might be willing to offer discounted rates for community projects like this. That sounds promising. And maybe we could organize a community cleanup day to spruce up the grounds before we start the renovations. It would show our dedication to maintaining a safe and welcoming environment for the kids. Excellent suggestions, both of you. Let's make sure to follow up on those leads and keep the momentum going. Is there anything else anyone wants to bring up before we adjourn? Actually, one last thing. I've been thinking about starting a mentorship program for the older students, pairing them up with adult volunteers from the community. It could provide valuable guidance and support as they navigate their way through school and beyond. I love that idea. It could really make a difference in the lives of those kids. Absolutely. Let's add it to the agenda for next time and flesh out the details. All right, then. I think we've covered everything for today. Thanks for your contributions, everyone. Until next time. Thanks, Bill. Take care, everyone. Bye. See you all soon.
you will hear a report once. It is about three minutes long. Then six questions will appear. Choose the best way to answer each question from the drop-down menu. Fish farming, or aquaculture, in Canada, has experienced significant growth in recent years, driven by increasing demand for seafood and the need to supplement declining wild fish stocks. While it presents opportunities for economic development and food security, it also raises concerns about its environmental impact. One of the primary environmental concerns associated with fish farming is the discharge of waste products into surrounding waters. Fish farms generate organic matter, excess feed, and feces, which can accumulate on the seabed and contribute to eutrophication, disrupting marine ecosystems and degrading water quality. This can lead to harmful algal blooms, oxygen depletion, and habitat degradation, affecting both wild fish populations and other marine organisms. Escapes of farmed fish pose another significant environmental risk. Farmed fish, particularly salmon, can escape from net pens due to equipment failure, predator attacks, or extreme weather events. These escapees can interbreed with wild populations, potentially diluting genetic diversity and compromising the fitness of wild stocks. Moreover, farmed fish may introduce diseases and parasites to wild populations, further threatening their health and survival. The use of antibiotics and chemicals in fish farming is also a concern. To prevent disease outbreaks and promote growth, farmers often administer antibiotics and other veterinary drugs to their fish. However, ever, these substances can accumulate in the environment, contributing to antimicrobial resistance and harming non-target organisms. Similarly, the use of pesticides and antifoulons to control parasites and biofouling on fish farm infrastructure can have detrimental effects on marine biodiversity. To mitigate these environmental impacts, various regulatory measures and best management practices have been implemented in Canada. These include stringent monitoring and reporting requirements, site selection criteria, and the development of eco-certification programs to promote sustainable aquaculture practices. Additionally, there is growing interest in alternative farming technologies, such as land-based recirculating aquaculture systems, which minimize environmental risks by containing waste and reducing the likelihood of escapes. By balancing the economic benefits of fish farm farming with environmental stewardship, Canada aims to ensure the long-term sustainability of its aquaculture industry.